By knowing how to create your own custom meshes in Unity through c -sharp code, you will not only be able to create any kind of shape you want, but also to edit it at runtime, so that you can change positions of the vertices and make it look however you want. With this, you will be able to create some nice procedurally generated terrains, some building systems, effects, UI, and much more. But before we can start creating our own meshes, we need to understand how everything is rendered in the scene. If you don't know what a mesh is, it is just shape of the object. So we can try creating some basic 3D object, such as cube, and creating of the custom meshes will also work in 2D, so don't worry. So we have the cube, and in the inspector, we see two main components, which we need to have on all objects that we want to be rendered. We have the mesh filter, which you can see that is holding the mesh, which is the shape of the object, which here is just cube. Then we have the mesh render, which is holding some other stuff. So always when you want to render some object, you need to have these two components. So if I delete one of them, yep, we are no longer able to see the cube. And what is the mesh made out of? When I go to the shading mode, set it to shaded wireframe, you can see some wires along the cube, which are just showing us what the cube is made out of, and you can see some triangles here. So we have two triangles making one face of the cube, and each triangle is made out of three vertices. Vertices are just these points on the corners of the cube. And with this basic knowledge, we can get right into creating our own custom mesh. So I will create new C -sharp script. Also, don't forget to add it to some object. So I will just create empty object. I will create variable, which will be a reference for the new object that we will create, on which we will have the custom mesh. And on start, we will need to create new object and assign it to the mesh object variable. But as I said, we need to add the two components to the object, so we can just add them here. So I am adding the mesh render and mesh filter components. And when we start the game, we can see that new mesh object was created, and indeed it has the mesh render and mesh filter components. Next, I will create new mesh and also save it into variable. So we are creating new mesh, setting it to the variable and setting its name. You don't have to be doing that if you don't want. And then I am getting the component mesh filter from the mesh object that we have just created that is containing these two components and I am assigning the mesh. When we play the game, we can still see the mesh object and on the mesh filter, we can see that we have successfully assigned the custom mesh that we have created. If you double click the mesh, you can see some info about it. So right now there is zero vertices, zero triangles, obviously, because we haven't added any. So let's get to that. To the mesh, we will need to add three properties. The first one are the vertices, then we have the triangles, and then we have UVs. I will explain to you what that means. So for the vertices, we will need to create vector free array because each vertex can be defined by X, Y and Z. Next, for the UVs, we will create vector 2 array. And for triangles, it will be just integer array. We also need to specify sizes of these arrays. So we want to have, for example, four vertices, because we will just create a square. For the UVs, each vertex has its own UV. And what are UVs? They are telling us the position, which range from 0 to 1, and they are telling the material and the shader where it should apply the texture to the object. So if we have some square, in the bottom left, the position is 0, 0, and in top right, it is 1, 1. So for each vertex, we will have one UV coordinate, which will help us to make the texture align with the object. Then how do we define the triangles? In the array, we just need to specify the vertices in the correct order in which we want to have the triangle. Because one triangle is made out of three vertices and we have two triangles because we want to make a square and square is made out of two triangles, we'll need to have six integers 
in total. Now as we have made all of these properties that we need the mesh to have, we can just assign them to the mesh. So we are just assigning the vertices, UVs and triangles. I've also created custom void to generate the mesh data. You can obviously still put it to the start. I'm also calling that void. And in the void, we will just set all of the vertex positions, UVs and triangles. So we will begin with the vertices. We will just take the vertex on the index of zero in the vertex array and we will assign it some value. So it will be vector free. And now it depends on us how we want to render the object. So what the shape should be. Because I want to make just a basic square, the first vertex will be on position 0, 0. And because you might also want to make some 3D objects, I will make it 0, 0, 0. So this is in the bottom left corner. For the second vertex, I will just go in a circle. So this will be on the Y of 1. Then we have the third one, which should be in the top right corner. So this will be 1 and 1. And then the last one, which is in the bottom right corner. So the X should be on 1 and Y on 0, just like this. So we have assigned all of the vertices. Next, we'll assign all of the triangles. So as I said, each triangle is made out of three vertices. And here we just need to specify indexes of the vertices from which the current triangle should be made out of. So we'll begin with the triangle that is on the left part. So the first one should be on 0, 0, which is the first vertex on the index of 0. Then it should go up, which should be the second vertex, which is on index of 1. And then the third one should be in the top right corner, which is the third vertex. So it has index of 2. Like this, we have created the first triangle. You want to make sure that when you are setting the indexes of the vertices, you go clockwise. Otherwise, the triangles will render as transparent if you go counterclockwise. So indexes of the vertices for the second triangle should look like this. I will leave the UVs for later and now we can check if this setup works. And indeed, we can see that we have generated a square. It is pink because no material has been assigned to it. But when I take a look at the mesh object, we have successfully assigned the mesh. When I double click it, you can see that there is four vertices, that's correct, and two triangles. Just to show you that the UVs really matter, we can just try assigning some material to that object. And I'm trying to assign the check flag because I will try to make it moving. And you can see that I have assigned the material, but it doesn't look right because we haven't assigned the UVs. So we'll get back to that. So I'm setting all of the four UVs that we have because each vertex has one UV and they are in the same order in which we have created the vertexes. So we are starting with the bottom left. What texture coordinate is in the bottom left? It is obviously 0, 0. And here it is just vector 2. Then we have the top left, which should be 0 on the X and 1 on the Y and so on. Just like that, we have set all of the UV coordinates. So you'll try assigning the material again. Yep, now we can see that it is rendering correctly. Just to make it that I don't have to be assigning the material manually, I will just create a reference for it in the script. From the mesh object, I will get component mesh render and just assign the material. I will just quickly show you how to create the material for a 2D texture. So I have my sprite here. Right click, create, material, assign the texture to the albedo. And because we are in 2D, so we don't need any lightning, I will click shader, go to sprites and select the default one. And now we can add it to the material property. Yep, and when we turn on the game, we have successfully created the square and assigned the material to it. But you could do all of this even easier just by creating a plane or a quad. So why have we been doing this? Well, because we have created the mesh on our own, we can edit all of the vertices. So just to show you, I will make the flag move like it is moving in the wind. So back in the script, in the update, we can change positions of the vertices. I will be changing just the right vertices 
which is the third and fourth one. So I will copy that part. And to which position we want to set it, I will just add sign of time so that it is slowly moving. So here we are doing it the same way as we have been doing it in the start. I'm assigning some vector 3 to the vertex on some index. The value on the x is 1.5 because I want to have it in the right. I'm adding sine of time, dividing it by 3. And on the y it is the same stuff. Right now we are just setting variable of the vertices. So we actually need to apply it to the mesh. So I will just take this line and set the vertices on the mesh. And here you can see that we have pretty nice moving flag. It is obviously really simple, but with the same approach, you could make some 3D terrains. So generate many cubes. Then for example, when the player destroys one of them, it could update the rest of the terrain or make some building systems so that the player can drag with the mouse and it will automatically build some walls to the place where he is dragging and a lot more interesting stuff. It is only up to you where you will use the custom meshes. Another benefit of creating your custom meshes is that you can make it more optimized because right now we are rendering just one side of the flag. So if I take a look at the other one, you can see that I'm still able to see it, but this is because of the shader that I set in the material. If I would set it back to the standard, we are able to see the flag only from one side. So like this, if you would be creating some kind of terrain where you have many cubes, you don't have to be rendering all of the cubes that are under the ground that the player can't see. You could just generate some custom mesh, which would be just the top of the ground that the player can see, so that you can make your games more optimized. And this is all for custom meshes. I hope that this video was useful. If you have any questions, drop them down to the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye! Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you are looking for a Unity, C Sharp or Bolt Tutor, then I am here for you, so feel free to send me a message to my Gmail and take a look at my website for more info. I can help you with your personal projects or teach you anything about game development you would want to know. You are welcome.